Well, the shortage of green stuff in the shops is either good news if you're a salad dodger like me or bad news if you're a bit of a health nut. Well, with warnings that the problem might last several more weeks, we put down on a budget flight and we sent him to Spain. We let his prices leap in and courgette stocks cut. I want to know what's going on. So to get to the root of the problem, I'm going directly to the source. And that means a little trip abroad to Spain. As we've seen on the news, our produce problem comes down to Europe's unusually wet, windy and wild winter. So this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's warm, it's dry, so I think I need to speak to some of the locals to find out what's been happening. After terrible weather hit Italy and Greece in December, the region of Murcia became one of the sole remaining sources of Europe's leafy greens. But then the floods arrived here too. A month later, this market doesn't seem to be doing too badly. My pigeon Spanish falls a bit flat with stall holders, but fortunately I find a couple of expats to fill me in on what's been going on. There's plenty of local produce coming into the markets now, but it's the large operators like Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Waitrose, some of them own the fields around this area, and we provide from those fields 80% of the fruit that's going to England in the winter. They had three days of torrential, non-stop rain, thunder and lightning. 70 years since they had rain, anything like this. It was striking lightning, and it was pretty awful. And the water was up to here. There was police. There that was went off about two weeks later, wasn't it? Helicopters were was packed on the beaches and that. So we were a foot deep in water right the way through the house. And we got a hit by lightning because they have a lot of underground car parking. A few people lost their lives. The whole of Los Alcazares was underwater. It's starting to become clear. This isn't just about paying a bit more for your greens in the weekly shop. What's happened here and across large parts of Europe has been devastating. I've been told this whole area should be dry, but it's covered in thick, sticky mud from the flood. And you can see how far we are from the beach. The devastation isn't restricted to the coast. I've heard about a farm in land that would normally be exporting these lettuces straight to the UK. The weather's been so bad here, it's ripped up the road. There's one million of pieces here on this farm. All the crop that we can see here has been destroyed. The problem is that the water is still inside the soil. If uh, we have this situation, the grower can work the soil because uh, the tractor could uh, stop. Like putting a tractor through treacle, it's not going to work. Because this takes a lot of work and it's nothing. How bad is that for business? 50% of the production in this area has been destroyed. It's impossible to, to sell and to, to eat this. No, it's, it's impossible it's, it's to dump. Prices have been affected here too, with lettuces costing more than a pound in supermarkets. In some areas of Murcia, the land has been drying, meaning production can now pick up. But with crops being lost across so much of Europe, demand for those vegetables will be high only in Murcia, no? it's the only area in Europe uh, where we can supply to, of iceberg, of lettuce. No? Could this happen again this year? Uh, we don't know. <laughs> if it, it, I hope not. <laughs> but it will happen. We are still on the, on the winter season. And how long before it gets back to normal? Normal situation, come back uh, end of March. In the weather, it's okay, no? I mean, this is a bit of an eye-opener, whole fields full of these. Our prices may have gone up in the shops, but people's livelihoods have been devastated here. That's the thing, I mean, you know, wherever you are in the world, if you're a farmer and you, you see produce like that, what can you do? You just, you're just at the mercy of the, of the weather. Absolutely. Well, green grocer Chris Bavin has been spending the week unpicking the truth behind food-related headlines on food, truth or scare. Now, Chris, we're hearing a lot about this crisis, this lettuce or courgette or whatever crisis, but actually this rationing is quite a good thing, you think? Well, I don't think it's rationing in the literal sense. I don't think what the supermarkets are trying to do is prevent or prohibit or reduce the amount of lettuce that the general consumers, the public, are buying. What they're trying to do is filter out the businesses that are now going in and buying 
large amounts of, of iceberg lettuce in this case, because what happens is when you see incredibly high wholesale prices, if you're a coffee shop owner, a cafe owner, or a restaurateur, it's actually cheaper to go into the retailer and buy it, but they're not buying one or two or three, they're buying they're 10, going, 15, yeah, 20. Buy bulk, so they're yeah. just trying to sort of restrict that. So yeah. they're not fearful that we're going to overdose on iceberg lettuce. I, I don't think that's the point. No, because, I, you know, invariably, you don't need to buy it more than mm -hmm. three iceberg. I certainly mm -hmm. never have. You know, so in terms of the general public, I don't think it's a huge problem in that sense. It's, it's, I think we should make the distinction. It's a big problem for the growers. Yeah. But I think for us as consumers, it's, it's not necessarily been a huge issue. And there is, just very quickly, certain products that have kind of made the most of the, the lettuce situation as well. And, yes, and yeah. In and Maybe we've been forced to be a little bit more adventurous. So actually, watercress sales, for example, have gone up by up to 50% in some cases. So I think maybe this, what this tells us is we should lessen our reliance on one single particular product and maybe yeah. be a bit more adventurous and, and try different things. Mix it up a bit. Now on to tomatoes, because they're in the news as well. Ketchup, are you a fridge or cupboard man? Well, traditionally I would have had them in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, isn't it? Yeah, oh, very. <laughs> 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 well, so traditionally, I would have had them in the cupboard and then once open, put them in the fridge. Right. Yeah. What about now, you, sir? First, first question to Trevor: Are you a ketchup? Man? I'm, I'm not a ketchup man. No. But occasionally, in, occasionally, you know, in New York, if you do that kind of thing of having your hot dog on the street, yeah. then they don't ask many questions. And you, if you have a hot dog, they just yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Put hot dog, I mean, you know, put ketchup on it. So, yeah. but um, do you so do just mustard and onions as well? Sorry, I no, just, just wanted to confirm. So I, I, not in the cupboard I, or in the fridge. No, I, I, I wait till I get to New York. 